Welcome to the modern application development screencast. In this screencast, we'll learn how to set up and use Redis. Uh, Redis is an open sourced in-memory data structure. It can be used as database, cache, and a message broker. And it can store various data formats against a key. Since it's in the memory, it's super fast because anything in the memory is super fast. And um, since it's super fast, it works really well as cache. And it can also be used as message broker, which means it can be used as a queue manager for our jobs. It also means that, you know, um, it needs memory to run, which means if the data is bigger than memory, uh, it's really not very efficient because then it has to move the data into the, you know, database, um, uh, hard disk and then reload it, etc., etc. So it's always better to have uh, data in the Redis uh, smaller than the uh, RAM we have on the machine. It's also not exactly like RDBMS. You can't really write like long SQLs and it, the data is not structured. Uh, so it has to be used as a no SQL, uh, you know, instead of RDBMS. So don't, you know, confuse this with a regular RDBMS database. Uh, use it like a new SQL if you want to use it like a database. In our screencast, we are going to use Redis as cache and message broker in the upcoming screencast. So it's important to learn um, how to install it, how to run it and how to use it. Now, installation is straightforward. If you have a Linux machine, you can go to uh, download section. And uh, if you're running on Ubuntu, you can just add the Ubuntu repositories and then, you know, install it or you can install it in Snapcraft. If you're in, uh, using non-Ubuntu uh, operating system, then you can just download, build and install. Now, if, if you're using Windows, uh, the Redis project doesn't give you, uh, you know, Windows installer. So it's always important to install a WSL and then install Redis using WSL. The other option is to install the Docker on the Windows and install a Docker a image of the Redis and then use that, right? Those are the two options. I think it's important at this point, uh, you install either WSL or a Ubuntu or a Docker. Okay, now once it is installed, uh, running is straightforward. You can call the command. Uh, if, you, if you're on Ubuntu, you can just call the command um, Redis server and to start the server. Now this starts a service in the background, um, unlike SQLite because SQLite doesn't have any service. This is like your uh, Postgres or MySQL starts a service, um, you know, and then you connect to that service to run. The Redis service usually runs on port 6379. Um, on the same, if you're running on this machine, then it will be localhost colon 6379. Uh, we'll, we'll install it locally and then start the service. In my case, I've already installed and running, so it's accessible. Now, Redis also comes with Redis CLI to connect to the database and explore. I'm going to use a UI instead of a CLI. Um, one of the popular UI is called uh, Redis Desktop Manager. Resp.app, um, or there is another one called uh, Redis Insight by Redis Project itself um, that you could use. But I'm going to use Resp.app, right? And it's available for all platforms. You can use it on Windows, on Mac, or you know Ubuntu or any other Linux uh, versions. So now, uh, once you install and open, the Resp looks like this. Then you have to connect to a server. I'm going to set up a connection setting so in future I'll, these uh, settings are saved. Uh, let's give a name my local Redis, right? And it's running locally, so I don't have to change the address. You can give localhost or 127.001. Port is 6379. I've not set up any password or username. One could uh, set up password and username uh, if uh, authentication is required. Um, you know, sometimes when you're using along with a web server on this local machine and has limited access, you don't need it. But, you know, 
on most cases if it's exposed you should uh, set up the uh, username and password uh, I'm going to test connection okay it's connected and I'll say okay now I'll connect it now Redis has multiple databases here like it's shown um, some the databases usually have a number instead of the uh, name uh, usually starts with zero and goes up and sometimes they are also called indexes instead of names um, I'm just going to delete these existing data items right and then refresh this okay now by default it won't have any data to insert the data you can click on this plus and give a key value this is like just key value paste and the values could be of any type values could be string list a set and many other types so I'm just going to do one string hello and a string string can be a plain text or a JSON JSON is also kind of a text right so let's say world here and save it and say yes so it gets saved you can see it's a key is hello value is world and Redis also has a feature called TTL which means time to leave uh, time to leave is a value in seconds for how long this value should be stored um, if it's minus one it's stored forever or you can set up some time in you know uh, seconds that it can expire and the value gets removed it's like an expiration time now it's very useful if you're using like a cache uh, because you want to store the data in the cache for only a certain amount of time and the cache to expire let's say you have a leaderboard of uh, cricket score or leaderboard of quiz competition that you want to cache it for only uh, like a minute after a minute you want to recalculate and save it now that since you have a high traffic you don't want to recalculate it every time someone accesses it you just want to recalculate it once a minute and store it in redis and then for a one minute you serve from redis after one minute it expires and clears then you will get a new fresh value and store it or if you're getting currency values from an external api and cache it for an hour so that you don't access the apis forever or the weather value so that you know your api rate limits are not hit so things like in such cases a ttl values are useful let's say if I keep um, 10 seconds as uh, a thing, uh, I can keep checking here, right? It become eight, five, four, three, two, one. It's now in the next round, it will be gone, right? So the key exists, but no value exists, right? And if I refresh the whole thing, you can see that nothing is there, right? It's gone. So this is how uh, you know you use TTL values to expire especially useful if you're running as a cache now it also has a concept of pub sub uh, where you publish and subscribe you know there can be many subscribers to a channel and when somebody publishes that something into that channel everybody in that channel gets the message and do something with it this is very useful if you have like um, a messaging platform you want to alert everyone you want to uh, alert every system that wants to get some kind of event message uh, useful for running job queues or you know sometimes uh, alert messages and stuff like that or push messages to some it's used as a backend for storing the push messages and sending messages to people who are subscribed to that push message <clears throat> redis also supports transactions like a regular database you could you could use it if you are using it as a NoSQL database it's very useful like I said it supports authentication and ACL uh, you could use it if you're going to use it um, there's a quick start guide you can start locally and uh, run it and uh, by default it's meant for uh, all the instructions are for like you know Unix system or a Linux system uh, like I said if you're using Windows use a WSL or a Docker um, now the next thing is um, you can either go to um, Redis open source project and start it so that you get an alert notification whenever there is a new version uh, released or any updates related to it so you can download the latest one and install it and read about it or contribute or do other things since it's an open source project I think everybody is welcome uh, 
टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट राइट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज रेडीज फॉर थ्री स्पेसिफिक केसेस इन द अपकमिंग स्क्रीन कास्ट द फर्स्ट वन यूजिंग रेडीज एज अ जॉब क्यू फॉर हैंडलिंग अ सिंक्रनस जॉब द सेकेंड केस इज वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज रेडीज एज द बैक एंड डेटा बेस और पब सब सर्वर फॉर सेंडिंग पुश मैसेजेस एंड द थर्ड थिंग इज एज अ कैश सो एज यू कैन सी it plays various roles very well so it's like a one tool that can play various roles so it's a good tool to have in your toolkit i would suggest you to go through the uh, documentation uh, in detail explore it uh, and learn the tool uh, it's going to be as useful as any other rdbms uh, you know a database tool that's all for today thank you so much for watching